This is Pops Takes Two. Take Two. Your chainsaw doesn't run. <laughs> I was starting to give a little background on the first one that I started here, and I was like, you know, that's a little bit of self-aggrandizement. Maybe I'll stop. <laughs> All I was doing is giving an example of I was at two shops, and I was told the same thing both times. I was slower than anybody else, had higher bills than anybody else, but no one had as many satisfied customers as the ones that I had worked on. So they didn't know how to take it because at the same time, there was two or three shops that told me the same thing after all of that. And he says, but that also means your total profit, final profit is higher than anybody else's. So the dollar is the bottom line. And it won every time trying to do it right. Yeah, there, there's fumbles in there. You always get a fumble. You diagnosed it wrong. You thought it was a carburetor for sure and it was a valve seat. Well, in a small engine, what we do? Pop the head off, tighten the valve seat in, cut the, <laughs> cut a new seat, throw in a new valve, and go. You know, that's, but that's part of the troubleshooting. You see, we should have found it with a compression test. No, not necessarily, especially with a Briggs and Stratton. So, you know, I've been down that road with some of this stuff. Anyway, your chainsaw doesn't start. There's several things to go over, and my friend Billy Joe Beck that was working on some stuff there having trouble with her saw. The same problem is that we can text and talk back and forth without being right there with a the chainsaw with it in my hands, feeling the thing, hearing the thing. It makes you, you don't know, you're guessing. But it sounds like she either has a compression problem or a carburetor problem. As if she took the screen out of the muffler, that 90% takes the muffler, anything being plugged out of the equation. If the screen's been plugged for a long time and it's an old saw, then the muffler gets plugged. You have a new problem because it'll even plug up the port exhaust port. So we'll start with that one. Your exhaust port and your exhaust screen, they have to be cleaned, period, or screen off and removed unless you're in U.S. Forest Service woods, and they have to have that thing in there. They're in every single two cycle that's sold. Don't, don't even question it. It's in there somewhere, unless the thing is very old. They started putting them in and mandating it sometime in the 80s. Around 1990, it was 100% mandate. Weed trimmers, blowers, everything. Because if it's, and the funny part of it is the newer engines that don't spark are the ones they demanded the screens be in. The older ones were using motor oil, SAE, non-detergent motor oil to mix in the gasoline to go through the saws. They would crap up and throw sparks out of them and start fires. Some of them were wide open. There's no muffler on them. You could look in there and see the rings and the piston. They threw sparks. But all the new stuff with those huge chambered mufflers, they still want the spark arrestor on there. Why? Well, because somebody can put bad fuel in there, plug up their muffler, they got a problem. So that's one of the things to check when you're going through this, is that plug. Because I mentioned that because that's most overlooked. One of the things you can tell is, does the saw sound muffled? When you pull it over, do you hear anything, a little pop out the exhaust or a puff? It's hard to hear with the big muffler, mufflers, but usually you can hear, hear something of it. Now the other one is, uh, of course, the spark plug. Now two things here when you're checking your spark and your spark plug. Take the old spark plug out, connect the new one, because that's one of the things that one of the guys told Billy Joe to do. It's a great idea. Put the new spark plug in, lay it against the cylinder head, okay, with the, the gap up and open, and then pull it over. And give it a good pull because usually it takes about 150 RPM for these things to, well, no, chainsaws are higher, anywhere between 2 and 300 RPM. So you got to give them a fair pull to get spark because you'll pull it over and uh, you'll just notice there's no spark. I don't have any spark. Well, maybe you do. You got to pull them over pretty good. And you say, well, when the spark plugs in, it goes, when you pull it up, the piston comes into compression and it's getting up near the point where it would spark. It's in compression. When it comes down the other side, though, when it comes over, it keeps turning, then the piston starts down. But you're on compression, so it almost throws it down, even without firing. They call it rebound. So when you're pulling, you get that puff, that flutter. It kind of pulls through and pop, 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 pop. Yeah. And it's testing your compression. But with a spark plug out, you need that speed. Give it a good tug. 
hold the saw down firm and give it a good tug and watch the spark and then slow it down keep going down slower and slower until you find a point where it just kind of sparks once in a while well now you know if you're pulling it at a fairly easy rate up through like this and it's just sparking a little now and then but you pull it a little faster and it's sparking continuously and you notice a bigger spark the faster you pull it to a point then you know your ignition system's working very well at that point as far as general operation what's the other thing it'll spark similarly take the old spark plug and this is twofold one of them is it'll give you an idea if the plug is fouled put that plug in there and test it but then take that you got your center electrode and take that bent side electrode break it off and while it's in that hole it should jump from that center electrode to the side of the spark plug you still have to have it grounded and lay it against the top there and get it adjusted so it'll lay against it and then give it a tug again it should jump a quarter inch gap easily mm-hmm yes it has to now what does that mean they have a thirty thousandths gap in your spark plug normally but when it's under compression with the gas oil and air mix in there for some reason the compression makes it harder to make fire so the amount of actual voltage to jump the gap just out here in free air is one thing the voltage to jump a gap when it's in the spark plug or in the chainsaw on compression is far higher and when you take that side electrograph out in the free air here and pull it over and it jumps that quarter inch gap that gives you an idea there's enough spark there to fire it in the cylinder because that's close to the voltage it needs the final voltage okay testing it out here in that little 30 thousandths gap it gives you an idea of the other one that wide gap gives you a pretty good indicator that it's good one is yeah I have spark the other one is oh yeah I have spark those are the simple ones your muffler and your spark plug and testing your ignition your recoil if your recoil does a lot of slipping then you're not going to get your saw started either you need to fix that problem it'll work to test the spark but when you put the spark plug in and you notice it's slipping and grating and don't even waste your time get it either get it fixed or fix it uh, what's the other one your fuel filter of course now the carburetor has two things that are interesting about it before you ever delve into it one of them is is it mounted snugly and some of the carburetors, on the older saws especially, they use, when the piston goes up and down, when it goes up, it makes vacuum below it. When it comes down, it makes a little minor compression below it. And that's how the carburetor, called scavenging, that's how the chainsaw breathes. When the piston goes up, it draws air in the carburetor, air and fuel into the base with the mix oil. That's how it's lubricated. When the piston comes down, the port closes off or there's a reed so it can't bark back through the carburetor. Now the piston comes down and it compresses the, because the crankcase is larger, it compresses a little. And as the piston comes further down, it opens up ports and that little compression will blow it up into the cylinder. Now by this time, the exhaust port's open. And that comes up, blasts through here, and as it comes into the cylinder, it pushes the exhaust out the port. When the port's open. So that's another thing. That's why you have to check that screen. But that gives you an idea of how that general system works, why it's so important. Your air filter being plugged can be a problem. Your choke not working properly. Um, but in the carburetor, as that piston goes up and down and it makes a light vacuum and some compression, there's a, either a port coming through or there's a hose coming from the base of the engine up to the carburetor. So there'll be two hoses. One will be fuel and the other one will be a pulse. Piston goes up and down, vacuum pressure, vacuum pressure, it pulses a little fuel pump inside the carburetor. If that hose or that port, if the port's blocked, not working well, then there's it won't pulse the fuel. And the other one is that line. If that line is cracked at all, the hose, I should say, if that hose is cracked at all, the elbows or something's plugged, then it'll never pulse that little diaphragm in there and you'll never pump fuel two important things how do you test them well it, it pretty much just pull on the hose if it's any good you give it a you know nice firm little tug don't go yarning on it unless you're replacing it 
give you an idea. And the other one is put your take the carburetor off, or even with the carburetor on, hold your thumb over the end, because quite often the choke's not in the carburetor anymore, it's in the air filter. And just put your thumb over the end of it and pull it over. You'll have to have the saw held down tight. You might have to clamp it in something. But how can I say this? Even without the spark plug, you can get some movement. So you take the spark plug out to make it easier. Hold your thumb over the end of the carburetor with the hose. Pull the hose off. Pull it over and see if you actually hear air moving in and out. Because it'll have a little whistle. How do you test the other one? The port type. The port type, take the carburetor off. Now put your thumb over the end of the port. Make sure the block or anything else is down there snug. Saw is held firm. Pull it over and you should hear a whistle out of that port. That's not a full test, that's just an indicator you're probably okay. And then from there, now you're into your carburetor, your fuel filter, your fuel line, and your pulse lines <coughs> and ports and your gaskets to be sure. Because sometimes a gasket at an older saw, they'll close the port off. But now you're into the carburetor. Or you're into your shutoff. Because if you're not having spark trouble, or if you're having spark trouble, you've got to check your shutoff. Be sure that's disconnected. And see if you have spark. So, now you're into your carburetor. And when you tear that apart, there's one side that usually is a steel plate with a teeny little hole on one side and has a dome on it. Well, that's the metering side. So all your adjustments and everything are in there and your little needle that controls it. On the other side, it usually has a flat aluminum plate. On that side, you have your fuel pump diaphragm. Some of them actually have a spring in them, but there's also little check valves in there. There are little flappers on a diaphragm. There's a gasket and a diaphragm. When you take that cover off, and 99% of the carburetors, <laughs> unless somebody's taken it out, but on 99 to 100% of all small carburetors ever made, there's a port down in there with a screen in it. And that's what feed fuel pumps in this side, goes through that screen, down through the needle, you're in that needle, and into the metering side of the carburetor, the working guts of the carburetor. I mean the actual working feed into the carburetor down into the throat side. So it pumps into this side, goes through the needle, into the other side. And that screen is most often your problem when it's plugged. So there's other things in the carburetor that you can get into, but if we start doing that on here, we're going to get into a mess. This is the simple stuff that just about anybody that has any mechanical acumen whatsoever can get into it and work without a problem. If you pull the other side off, you have to be careful and know how it comes apart because you can damage a lot of stuff in there too. Some of the carburetors have a diaphragm that's locked into a little pendulum fork that opens and closes the needle. Most don't. Some do, so you need to be careful. When you pull that diaphragm off, if you're planning on reusing it, you have to do it very carefully. You have to know which adjustment is on the needle's control arm. Some of them adjust internally to a level. Some of them adjust to the gasket surface to that level. So you need to know all those things before you start tearing into it. If you're pretty sure it's your carburetor and that's the problem, well, then consider another thing is you can go online to, oh, I can't remember the name of that other company. The heck was it? I'd have to look it up again. But there's a couple of them online that will sell you a carburetor replacement kit with fuel filters, lines, and all for 25 bucks. And most of them work okay. Not all of them. But it did. It has worked, and I got a lot of my stuff off of Amazon for some of the saws for it. I try to avoid it like the plague, because like I found out in a couple of cases, you can't take this nice new aftermarket carburetor and put any of the parts into the original carburetor. They're built on the similar principle, on the same principles even, but they're not built on the same scale. Sizes are different. I had one for uh, Briggs and Stratton. I was trying to swap parts from one to the other. Didn't make any difference. They wouldn't fit. They weren't designed the same. It was bad. But I still was able to take some of the parts and make the thing work. But the original, I got, believe it or not, I got the $25 kit with a carburetor and all to put on the machine, and the carburetor turned to be almost completely useless. I bought it because the kit... The gasket that was in the kit from Briggs and Stratton 
even aftermarket was $25. <laughs> so he didn't lose anything. And you'll run into that with some of this aftermarket stuff. Aftermarket ignition. The only reason you buy it is if you're a homeowner, you cut a little bit of wood now and then, and you have two, if you have two or three saws for different sizes and backup, you can try the cheap stuff. Especially on your older saw. Why not? Because you're going to have a hard time finding the OEM stuff. So give it a shot. But, you know, for the most part, have a spare. Be ready. Aftermarket saw chain? No. Stay with your OEMs and your steels and your Oregons. Yeah. Stay with them. Don't go in. Oregon owns everything but steel chain and bars. <laughs> everything. Because I used to love uh, Carlton. Carlton had beautiful chain. Good bars. They used to buy modified Windsor bars. Everything they had was excellent quality. All of it. Steel had a little better chain, but Carlton was right there with them. Carlton was easier to sharpen. They had a file of plate. But you can't find Carlton because Oregon bought it. And Carlton is not the same chain as it used to be. It's still good, but it's not that excellent stuff. So, but still, you can buy it under Carlton and Oregon. You're buying some good stuff. Well, anyway, that's all I have for now. That puts it up to 16 minutes and 30 seconds here shortly. So that's not too bad. If you can spend 20 minutes of your time listening to me babble on about how to check your chainsaw. There's only one other thing left. And the interesting part about that is this is a general check. Again, the last thing. Your carburetor's off. You plug off either the port that's coming to the carburetor for your pulse port. That's right there by the intake port. And it's with a gasket or in seal's case they have a rubber uh, seal there or the hose, but find a way to plug it. If it's going into the chainsaw, that's a whole nother deal. You can put your thumb or a plate over the top of that intake port and the little pulse hole. Then if you have the hose, plug the hose. Now what am I doing here? Take your spark plug out and pull it over and see if you feel vacuum. Mm -hmm. You can put your thumb and a finger over the hole there, or thumb in particular, or have somebody else pull it over. And just plug off the little port, put your thumb over it and feel it. Pull it over and see if you feel vacuum and pressure there. That gives you a very rough idea that the crankshaft seals are good. Because if your crankshaft seals are bad, you might build pressure, but you won't build vacuum. And my O20 has that exact problem. I cannot build any vacuum at all. I cannot build enough vacuum to be worth it. And what vacuum is there, the instant I stop pumping, it goes... So, that's just a rough check to give you an idea. If you have good suction and you feel the pressure push back, well, just a little bit, not much. If it's a reed valve, you'll feel the reed valve snap shut. So, but the vacuum is the biggest thing. If you feel that vacuum, you're in good shape. The pulse hose uh, bypasses a lot of stuff. So you can cover up your carburetor port and pull that over. And if you hear that air coming in and out, very good. So those are just some ideas to, before you take it to the saw shop at $100 an hour, 125 an hour, to help you out. Nah, now we're coming up near 18 minutes or almost on 19 minutes. Like I said, 20 minutes of your time might be worthwhile. By the way, the last thing to go over 20 minutes, maybe not. F preferred, P-F-E-R-D, makes a, this filing tool with two round files and a square file in the middle for your rakers. Buy it. 325 chain is 3 16 and either 13 or 7 seconds for the full 3 8 chain. They work excellent. I have them all the way down to the little eighth inch for the little electric steel chainsaws I have. They work excellent. You can get your teeth and your rakers matched. And if you do it that way, your tooth and your raker match together on the same tooth, then it doesn't matter that one tooth is longer than the other because they'll all be cutting at the same rate. Trust me, it's worth it. And if you take the time to try and get your teeth the same length and they're all matched up, your cutting is so smooth you won't believe it. 
almost 20 minutes. Catch you later.